introducing the natural logarithm in terms of calculus. We define the natural logarithm of x being greater than 0 to be the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. Since the integral from 1 to 1 is equal to 0, log of 1 will therefore equal 0. If x is greater than 1, then log will be positive. If x is less than 1, then the log is negative because our upper bound is to the left of our lower bound. As x increases, the area under the curve increases. So the limit of log x is infinity as x goes to infinity. As x gets closer and closer to 0, the net area is growing without bound, but the integral is negative for x being less than 1. So the limit will be negative infinity as x approaches 0, coming from the right. The number e has the property that the area under the curve from 1 to e is equal to 1. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative of the natural log of x equals 1 over x. Since x has to be positive, 1 over x has to be positive, and that tells us our function is an increasing function. If you look at the second derivative, you will see that it is always negative, which tells us our function is concave down. So. The function is defined for x strictly greater than 0. The function is positive if x is greater than 1, and it's negative if x is less than 1. Log 1 equals 0. Log e equals 1. As x goes to infinity, the log goes to infinity. As x approaches 0 coming from the right, the log will equal negative infinity. The derivative is equal to 1 over x, and the function is always increasing and concave down. So let's look at a graph of that. So this is the graph of log x. As x approaches 0 coming from the right, it's going down to negative infinity. We also know that as x goes out to infinity, this function continues to grow. We know that log 1 equals 0 and log e equals 1. What else do you remember from pre-calculus? The log of a product is the sum of the logs. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. The log of x to the m equals m log x. Now let's practice using these from pre-calculus. Let's write the expression as a single log. First, use your power rule on 5 log x. Moving from left to right, we combine the first two terms. Again, use the rule that the sum of the logs is the log of the product. Then use the rule that the difference of the logs is the log of the quotient. And you're done. Let's do, uh, let's go backwards. Write the expression, let's uh, unravel this. Write the expression as the sum and difference of logs and express all powers as factors. The log of the quotient is the difference of the logs. For the first term, let's use the exponent rule. Then, Notice that I wrapped parentheses around the second term, and that's because there's a subtraction involved. Looking inside the parentheses, the log of the product is the sum of the logs. Then, use your exponent rule. 
and distribute the negative into the parentheses. One more pre-calculus problem I'd like to do for review. Assuming x is greater than 4, solve this equation. The log of a difference is, I'm sorry, uh, the difference of two logs is the log of the quotient. Because the log function is 1 to 1, this tells us that x is equal to that quotient. Solve for x. To solve for x, I first multiply both sides by x minus 1. Distribute the x. I have a quadratic, so let's get everything over to the left-hand side. Either factor or use the quadratic formula. This could be factored fairly easily. And I discover that x is equal to 6 or negative 1. So, um, solving for x, we got uh, x equals 6 or x equals negative 1. But we disregard the solution x equals negative 1. That is not an allowed value. And the only solution is x equals 6. Let's do a quick check. Take your equation, and every time you see an x, put in 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. Then use your quotient rule. And you can see we've got on the left-hand side log 6. On the right-hand side, we have log basically of 6. All right, take care, and uh, we will continue this discussion in part two.